Uh, the last menu item here is setup. Uh, the setup screen, this is where your business information is, your address. Um, you can add in your website, your phone number. Uh, you can add your business hours, uh, your logo. This is where you would add your logo in order to allow you the, the logo to print on the receipt. And uh, one, we'll go through these uh, submenus as well, too. So this is the setup. This is the business information screen. API tokens. Uh, this is, you don't have to worry about this. Devices. So, this is where you can actually go in, and if you wanted to name the device, uh, you can do that here. So, you know, in this case, this is the device that Michael carries, so I've named it Michael. So, anything that comes up, I'll, I can identify, you know, what's happening with Michael's machine. Payments. Uh, this is if you have a cash drawer, you don't have to worry about that too much. Um, down here, you can prompt for invoice number. So if you want an invoice number to come up that you want to type in when you do a transaction, you can do that. You can also have cash back options. So if you want to be able to offer, you know, a customer take 20 bucks, get 20 bucks back, that sort of thing, you can enable that here. And you can also change the signature requirement. So if you have uh, an amount that you're doing and you want to say don't require a signature, if transaction is under or always requires a signature. So this would be for manual transactions where the Clover will ask for a signature as well, uh, which will help you, uh, you know, prove that that is the person uh, that is, whose card it is. Payment receipts. So here you can automatically print a customer receipt or not. Uh, you can skip the, the receipt screen uh, and start the next transaction right away if you choose this one. Allow customers to opt into marketing on email and receipts. So again, um, this will this is uh, information that you can put in there if you want a customer who gets an email receipt, they can opt into marketing. So basically, what that does is gives them permission for you to email them back again. Payment receipt appearance. So the custom header text. So if you wanted to enter any kind of information into there, thanks for your support or uh, thanks for supporting our business. Whatever kind of message that you might want to put in there, you can type that in. This is where you can show the logo. So show logo on payment receipts. Use business logo when printing receipt. So I've chosen yes. So under the business information, this is a security feature every once in a while. If you've been on the screen too long, it'll ask you for the password again, just to make sure that it's it's still you uh, using the thing. You scroll down again. So this logo, that's where uh, that logo, that's the, the logo it's referring to when it says use business logo. Okay. Online receipt URL, barcode, customer information, uh, etc. So there's a number of other features here that you may or may not use depending on the different features uh, that you have within uh, your Clover that you want to do. Uh, printers, um, there's no printers yet for Clover in Canada, but when they become available, again, this will be where you can uh, manage your printer setup. Virtual terminal, uh, build your customer database by collecting information about your customers. So you can set this as mandatory or as optional. So again, under virtual terminal, if you want to always have to be able to collect all this information, you can simply set as required, like so, and hit save. And of course, you want to change those, you can simply untoggle them. Reporting, uh, start of date time. So uh, you're reporting, you may want to run certain reports and you know that your business doesn't start before 8 o'clock in the morning. So 24 hour clock from 8 to 8, so that would be a daily report for you. And if we click on view reports here in this section. Then it'll take you to the report screen. Scroll back down again. Reporting. So I didn't save that. I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to do that right now. I'm going to change that to 8 o'clock. 
Save that. Enable removed items report. So this report is for all printed or unprinted items removed by any employee who has access to an order. So that way you can see, again, if you enable this, you can see all the information that happens, whether it's a refund or a void or anything else. Uh, additional charges. Uh, you can have a charge for um, cash back, for example. Tips. This is where you can manage your tip option. You actually turn tips on at the machine level. You don't do it through your dashboard. But once you have turned it on through your device uh, using your admin code, now you can change the uh, tip options as well. And you can also edit not only the percentage that you use, but you can also edit uh, the words that you use. Um, I recently had someone call up and ask, uh, could they use this tip option to do a donation amount to a charity? Uh, and the answer is, yeah, if you wanted to turn on the tip option and you wanted every, you know, to give the customer an option to donate towards a charity, let's say it was 5% uh, or even 2%, whatever that happens to be, and it's a donation to Canadian uh, Junior. Oh, you only get so many Canadian. Let's do this. Um, so there's a, a, a something you can set up directly on the tip option if you wanted to do something like that as well too. So a little bit of versatility there for you uh, gives you uh, an opportunity to kind of play with the different settings, and uh, of course then just hit save afterwards, whatever you do choose. Account settings. And this is where you can change your password for the dashboard itself. And under merchants, uh, all the different merchants that may be linked to your uh, mid in this case. So if you're just one business, it would just be you, your business there. Okay. So that is a you know very basic overview. Uh, gives you an opportunity to just kind of see what's going on. The other thing I want to mention as well too is that under the help section up here in the corner, there's a number of different ways you can do it. One of them is to browse help that will take you to a separate web page. So if I click there, uh, this help section is a uh, good help. You can just type in whatever it is that you're looking for. So in this case, I want to find information on making manual transactions. So here you can tell you exactly uh, what to do and how it'll work as well. So you can use this help desk uh, to search a lot of different individual information, um, but you can also email support. You can have them call you back um, and, or you can call them directly. And this is just a copy of your mid, your Clover mid, not your first data mid. So just the difference there. Um, but if you're calling into Clover support, then they'll be able to look up your account using that number as well. Okay. So that's in the help section in the top right hand of the Clover dashboard. And last but not least, the three bars here simply open and close uh, that point there. So if you have additional questions, uh, you can, again, you can reach out to the help desk for Clover or get a hold of your advisor. Uh, that has sent you this video and uh, or you can call kiss payments at our toll-free number as well all right thanks very much